Okay. Anyone else nervous? <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> uh, like Pastor Mike said, first of all, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come and to share and share my heart and be vulnerable with you all tonight. And hopefully you can take something away from this. That is my goal. And hopefully um, that happens. So thank you again. Um, so as he said, I'm Jessa Howard. Uh, if you follow me like on Instagram uh, and my art, I actually go by Jessa Margaret, so don't get confused. That's the same person. I just chose Jessa Margaret because that is my middle name and it's just the name that I feel like is like 100%, you know, 100% me. Um, so my story, I'm gonna start with a little bit about like my journey here to expectation and my testimony. I grew up in the church um, from, since I can remember, you know, like age four all the way up to age 21. And I had, I had a lot of loss in my life. I'm gonna cry. By the way, people, I, I'm gonna cry tonight. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this soon. Um, I had a lot of loss in my life. Um, my, I have one brother and he passed away when he was 16 and I was 21 and it was a, it was a one vehicle tragic accident and it just rocked my family and just changed my life forever. And I just decided, I got pretty angry with God. Like, how could you do that? How could you do that? How could you take him? And I stepped away for a long time from like age 21 to 2019. So, I mean, we're talking almost 20 years. And I know that the entire time God was with me, I know that now, but for a long time, I was walking alone, trying to find my way in my own strength. Um, so 2019 came around and I met Pastor Christian and he asked me at a birthday party for one of my daughters uh, if I belonged to a church. And I said, I said, no, but you know, that's something I've been trying to get around to. And he kind of <laughs> chuckles <laughs> and he gave me his card. And I was like, yes, like I just said, yes. Like I've been waiting for this moment and I came and I'm still here. Like it's been wonderful. It's, it's just changed my life. So on top of that, how does my faith journey meet with my art journey? So. I have always been creative since the time um, I grew up all the way and I went to college for art and design and uh, I worked professionally as a graphic designer for over a decade and I, I haven't done paint, it didn't do painting for a long, long time. And I don't think it's a coincidence that in 2020 when the world shut down and remember I had come here to expectation and I was like reunited in Christ. I sat down at the kitchen table one day with my kids and I was just like, I'm gonna do this. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. And I just started painting and then I started sharing on social media and it started to connect with people. And something I always wanted, like I always wanted that. And it started to happen. And I just don't think that that was coincidence. So it really took off, like it started you know, at my kitchen table, and a couple years later, um, I, I'm selling art. You know, one year from the day that I sat at that kitchen table, I went to Bell Jar Design in Clifton, Virginia, and I like to shop there because I like home decor and all of that, and I was checking out, and then I was on my way to my car, and the lady who owns the shop came running after me, and she says, I just saw on the receipt you signed your name. Jessa Howard. She's like, are you Jessa Margaret? I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> She's like, I follow you on social media. Like, what? How do you follow me? Um, and she was like, I've been meaning to talk to you. I would love to feature you in the shop. Like, are you open to that? Would you like to bring some of your paintings in? And I was like, what? Like, really? So I brought them in and I sold, like, it was... It was like 26 paintings that I had had. I took them in, they all sold. I have no idea who they went to. And then she's like, I want more. So I took more in. In one year, I sold over 60 paintings. Like, thank you, God. Like, this is amazing. Um, 
So that is my story, like I'll try to sum it up in, in a few minutes. But uh, I did put a presentation together. And let's see, there's yeah, it's me. So I put this presentation together. I've been thinking over the last like six months since Mike, uh, Pastor Mike invited me to come speak here. of like, what do I want to say? I have so much to say. Um, so we'll see if I can get it all out. But when I was thinking about what to call, call this, because I feel like it needed a name, I chose Who Says. I don't know if you've ever seen my car in the parking lot, but the license plate is Who Says. And a lot of people always ask me, what does that mean? Who says? Um, <laughs> and I'm always a little bit embarrassed to say, like, oh, it's like one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite singers, John Mayer. Uh, he has this song that's called Who Says, and the line, there's a line in it that really resonates me and also speaks to my story. And it's, um, who says I can't be free from all of the things that I used to be? Rewrite my history. Who says I can't be free? Now, the song, if you listen to it, it does talk about, I'm sorry, getting high. <laughs> I don't embrace that part of the song, but we can leave that behind. The rest is golden. <laughs> So this is a, a little chat I put together called uh, A Practice of Awakening Your Creative Heart with God. Um, and throughout, I have it into sections, and throughout, um, I have some scripture. So when I say, who says you can't be free? God says we can't, you know, we can be free, that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. So this is what I feel like I've built my creative journey on and hopefully it resonates with you in any creative pursuits that you have whether it be music writing knitting I mean we the list goes on and on as pastor Mike said anybody can be creative you just sometimes you have to dig a little deep and really think about where you are um, so this is the scripture I paired with it he so it's something to keep in mind that the very first thing your foundation for building your creative pursuits is, is in him and having a relationship with Christ. And he existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. So I always think of seek ye first, the kingdom of God. Um, seek the kingdom, seek him first and everything, build your life on him and all will be added. We're not here to build our own kingdom. We are not here to, to do this life and this creative journey on our own, that we need him. And we really need to take the time to reflect on that and always come back to that, as Pastor Christian's been talking about, that main invitation. Um, we are not our woundedness. We are not our losses. We are not any of that. We are not our failures. We are his beloved. So coming back to who says, who says? Him. <laughs> the next one I have is vision. So once you have that foundation and you have that life with Christ, you want to add into that your own uniqueness. This is the passage I chose. It says, so we can do all good things he planned for us long ago. I truly believe he had a plan before we were here to send us here. Like we are all creative, but what makes you unique he knew that um, we were specifically designed with parts of his nature inside of us and you truly are unique and you really need to get curious and think about like, that thing that thing that makes you feel like you're set apart from others I definitely felt that myself growing up I was always like the, you know the kid who won all the coloring contests Sorry. <laughs> and it really always made me feel special. Like, I tried sports. No, like, it is not my thing. But, like, art, coloring, drawing, all of that, that, that was my thing. So that is, like, what I feel like set me apart. Um, so once you have that, it's a key to understanding where your gifts and your talents lie. And ultimately, how God can speak through you. So... What is vision? I feel like vision is your gifts plus an understanding of him and what you're called to be equals your vision. It fulfills your unique purpose in the kingdom of God. And it's the second invitation to walk in the fullness that God has designed for you and to fully embrace it. Lean into him 
in your assignment, because he's given you an assignment, <laughs> he's been waiting. He really has. He's been waiting for you, and he desires for you to live a life abundant and full of joy. Um, so there's value in your creative expression. Like, don't downplay that. Like, I went to college for art, and my parents were so happy I was going to college. They never were like, what are you doing? I was the first one in my family ever to go to college, and I chose art. But everyone else was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, my answer was like at 18, I was always like, because it's what I like, um, which I think is a solid answer because that's what fulfills me. Um, so, yeah. Um, so your creative expression and your language uniquely represents God's voice here on earth. And it's a beautiful, holy moment not to downplay that creative expression. So who says that you should em embrace that? He does. And the next one is uh, release. And I chose this. So release is the next step where we've built our foundation. We have our vision. What do you do next? Is like, this is the act. He is like inviting you to walk through that door and take that next step and it's action. Right? So we're going to, we're going to like, we're, we're going to release this, right? Um, this is where the release happens. It's where you now have, you have an agreement. You have an agreement with God between his heart and your heart. So you're seeing and agreeing, allowing the gift to flow through you. And this is the difference. I really want to like, like nail, like nail this is the difference between for God and with God. This is something I work through, I think, honestly, within like the last six months. So this, this is really new to me because I used to think just even a short time ago that when I was sitting down to paint, well, like, I want God to be happy with this. I'm going to pray and like hope that he blesses this. I hope he likes it and I hope other people like it. So I feel like that's for God. And just recently I've gone through like this transformation and now I see it differently that this is, this is a process to work directly with God and the Holy Spirit. So um, it's not doing, you're not doing this in your own strength. You're co-laboring, which I, my, uh, Pastor Mike, that's what I thought maybe collab st stood for. Um, <laughs> co-laboring. Uh, let's see. So what does that, what does that feel like? When I think, when I personally think about doing it in your own strength, I think of like a rocky path. It's really barren. It's hot out there. I'm in my Birkenstocks, which are not a good footwear choice. It's like really, really hard. But when you're doing something with God, like imagine, you know, just like uh, Psalms 23, he leads me beside still waters. It's like enjoyable. It's fulfilling. It's peaceful. That's the difference between for and with. Uh, his way is better. So I have a video clip. All right. So <laughs> this video clip is what I personally feel like my journey when I sit down in my studio to paint and I have this invitation with, you know, to sit down and create with God. I want you to understand like this. It feels it's like a dance. Right, and he's invited you onto the dance floor, and you think of you might have in your mind like a ballroom, graceful dancing, but this <laughs> is what it feels like. I hopefully you all love Napoleon Dynamite as much as I do. Honestly, I think this is my favorite movie. Okay, so if you're familiar with the movie Napoleon, here I'm just gonna set it up real quick. He's supporting his friend Pedro, who's running for, I think it's class, class president, right? And Pedro gave a speech and he's feeling pretty defeated. And his friend Napoleon sees this opportunity. He's like, oh, you'll see him. He's like, I'm just gonna turn it on. He's like, he's, he's like, oh, I know what I'm gonna have to do. Oh, I'm like, I want, like, I'm, oh, I don't wanna have to do this, right? I have to go support Pedro. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> He's like, 
this is, I feel like, the ultimate picture of being vulnerable. I mean, he is, this is like vulnerability showing up. He's not a professional, not a professional dancer. And he is just, he just goes for it, right? And it's like awkward and clunky. And sometimes like when I'm in the studio, that's what it could be like, but it's also like so good. <laughs> and you can see like right like you might be feeling like when you're creating that that's what people are going to be thinking right like there's like the doubters out there and the enemy is like getting into your mind but like you you're doing it anyway you're doing your own thing and also point out not he did not learn that like all from watching somebody else who like perform this perfect routine it's all him so if if i skip will it go to the end okay i won't make you sit through four minutes <laughs> so he's wrapping he's wrapping up here there's a important lesson at the end They love it. He gets a standing ovation. It's like amazing. Like everyone is rooting for him. And I think it's because, not because he was like the coolest kid in school, but because it was real, right? He was real. Okay, so then that leads into, so now you've done this thing and you're holding on to this thing that you've created and you're kind of like Napoleon, like, oh, like you're gonna make me do this. I'm oh, so uncomfortable like showing another person, but this is like, this is where it happens. This is, this is the, the worship, the worship part that I like to call it. Um, so the arts, the arts re reach into the deepest part of who we are. Art has the ability to transcend spoken language and communicating to our hearts and souls. And the Lord uses an uses that process in and through us to awaken hearts, our own hearts, and the opportunity is to awaken hearts of others. So how does worship happen with visual art? I wanna make like, like a comparison here. So when, you, when I think of worship traditionally in the past, I would think of going to church and listening to a sermon and a sermon definitely has its purpose and God uses, uses that to awaken and change hearts. But sermons, for just as one example, um, they're really clear. They use spoken language. They really get at the answers. Like, oh, there's questions too. Like, it can provoke questions inside of you. But really, it's providing answers. Where visual art, like painting, is different. Where there's really no there's really no answers. The purpose isn't for answers, but to evoke questions inside of us. So painting uh, and other visual arts can do that. It's an invitation to explore your heart and to be spoken to by the Holy Spirit. It's a tad mysterious and it can be an ambush even at times. Like I'm sure that you've been in, in, in worship while um, listening to music and it's just like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. And you're just crying. You're crying like the ugly tears because it's just moved inside of you if the Holy Spirit has and paintings and other art have this, has the ability to do that too. Um, for example, I just want to share a story, and this is where I might cry, maybe I won't, is I wasn't expecting this, but when I started sharing um, my, my things on Instagram, I was connecting with a lot of people I don't know, and I had two DMs recently where this lady wrote me and she said, basically i don't know why but like i got really emotional it was a video i shared of your of your painting in the sky it made me really emotional and i don't know why why do you think like 
I was like, it like choked me up and made, like made me cry in my car when I was reading it because that wasn't me. That wasn't like my pain, but I truly believe like that was the Holy Spirit moving through her. And I had another one too with a lady who wrote me who went to Beljar and she saw um, some of my cards and it's, they spoke to her and she wrote me and she said that she, she bought one because it spoke to her um, and that it gave her hope. She was, going, she was going through some troubles and it gave her hope in a time of like darkness. And I was just like, wow. So if we can't be vulnerable and share our art, like we could be missing out on moments like that, that you, I would have never believed was possible um, with my creative expression. So we have to trust God in that and we have to surrender and we have to remain open and vulnerable. God can use you in powerful ways. It's the power, it's the power of the invite and an invite through art. It could be the doorway for someone else to come to Christ. So this was, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but here, day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. And then finally, it's the reveal. It's all of this combined uh, reveals the true nature of God, that God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies, then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. So just always remember, like, ultimately, through it all, it's revealing himself to us, a life of abundance and joy and fulfillment. And if you ever forget that, just remember who says him, through it all, him. Thank you. I really love the contrast of the, the for God versus with God. Um, and um, I think that's a, 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 a you use the word invitation as well. Um, I thought it was beautiful um, how God invites us in, like almost how God invites us in with, like, with his process. <laughs> um, but I'm curious to know if you have a specific process that you, do you have a, a, a rhythm, a routine, a ritual? Is there anything that when you're trying to enter into a creative space um, that, that you, you do specifically? Or yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. 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 It's uh, also a tad mysterious. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, I know, like I, I forgot to mention this part. I skipped over it in my notes, but uh, there's, for me, there's this difference between flow and forced mm -hmm. and I know when I'm flowing mm -hmm. and quite literally I feel like the Holy Spirit with me flowing through me as I'm putting paint onto a panel versus when it's in my own strength I can like feel that mm -hmm. and that is forced yeah so I don't know when it's going to happen like recently so those two larger those two larger panels over there those both definitely were born through flow like I had no plan like it was almost like okay we're doing this <laughs> we're going to do this and I'm just going to sit down and both of those were both done like all in one sitting yeah. and I put on my music and I say sorry guys leave me alone <laughs> um, and it, those are all just from memory yeah. They just kind of flow out, and that's when that's what I also like to call like it's you'll see on like my profile and stuff too. I really resonate with um, keep me where the light is. Like those moments are so holy and so magical. Like that's like keep me where the light is. Like and I'm always like, can we do it again? I want to do it like that again. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I love the again the the two force and flow because I think I don't know if you guys are like like I'm sure you guys have like those moments of flow right where it's like 
time, like you stand outside of time almost. Um, and so, um, but I do think like there are times and seasons where we have to f force ourselves a little bit as well. Um, at least I do. Um, it doesn't look like the, f I wish I could just like flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so even, even if, you know, for everyone in the room, like if you don't, you know, if you don't have maybe, if you haven't experienced that in a long time or have something specific, like, again, like maybe even thinking back to when you were younger, when you were a kid, like sometimes even just going back to childhood, like what were the things you just get lost in, right? You just played and just like, there were no worries, concerns, you know, and I'm trying to find connections there as well. Um, but, and again, wish I could just turn on flow or whatever, but um, inspiration, where do you find inspiration? And then maybe how does that transfer into your work? Uh, definitely in nature. Mm. I almost feel like the skies or God speaks to me through the skies. Mm. Like that's when he gets my attention. Like, yeah. and I'm always inspired by that and spending time in nature with my family. Um, music, like music really moves me. Um, I'm definitely that person that's like, I got a song for that, <laughs> for everything. Um, so I think those are the two largest things. Yeah. 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 For me. So good. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask? Just want to make sure. Veronica, yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a couple of Um, do you remember what it was, or do you remember what it felt like, um, after like painting again, like the first time you flowed, I guess, do you remember what that felt like? And, like what, I guess, like, what did you paint, or, like, yeah. what kind of, like, flowed through you the first time you felt like you, you flowed? Yeah, um, I guess, like, I remembered, because <laughs> I did go to college, like, I, I didn't mention this, but, like, I do have all of that forced learning that I had to do, like, in college, like, I, so I know how to use the paints, I know color theory, I, like, I know all the textbook things, right? Um, but when I sat down to paint that first time, I was like, let's see if I have this. Like, I used to like this, like, but it's been 20 years. And I did it and like showed my family and they're like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, let's see if Facebook likes it. And I'm like, they did too. Um, and now I like go back and I look at, I still, I told you, Veronica, I was going to bring it with me. I found it in the bottom of a drawer because I wanted to hold on to it. It looks a lot different than that. Um, but I can see that. I can see that group. So I was excited. I was like, yes. Did you find that um, you were at first busy working versus being still and letting God? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Like definitely in, in like my own strength and like, um, caught up in the, and this was hard for me too, like all through, you know, college and like, if I, if I paint, like I'm not successful unless it looks like a photograph, like it has to be convincing, like, and that's what means good. But I find that the art that I've made, closer to now that I've received feedback from people. It's where I've just, I don't care about any of that anymore. Like, it's just, what, I'm not, I have my blinders on. I'm not looking at what I think other people have done really well, but I'm just doing my own thing. Heads, like, head down, hand up, heart up, but yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Just make sure we're good. <clears throat> I just have a comment. So I lived in Hawaii for a few years, and I went to like the Hawaiian Islands Ministry Conference a few times. And during their uh, sermons and their, their worship times, they would have painters who would paint mm -hmm. during the music and during the wow. yeah. And they would be really cool yeah. to see like what would come out of that. I actually did that in high school. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. So like I said, I wasn't good at sports <laughs> and I wasn't good at music, but in youth group, a lot of my friends were very good at music. And so they would do specials in church. They would play the piano and they would sing. And I always was like, 
<laughs> and then uh, somebody uh, somebody asked me like, hey, like if Katie plays the piano, how about you draw something? Yeah. And I, I remember doing a charcoal drawing of a lighthouse, like live. Yeah, and a lady after was like, is that for sale? And I was like, sure. <laughs> yeah, living at your Napoleon Dynamite there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, I definitely get stuck. I think that I will forever deal with also that like imposter syndrome and like comparison trap of, you know, I can get inspired by like looking at other artists work. And there's times where I almost, I'm going to be honest, I get a little jealous, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like maybe musicians and, and other people too, like, are like, ugh, so good wish I thought of that, or I'd like to mine to look like that. Um, but to get inspired, I have to try to turn, turn that off, like connect in nature, listen, definitely music. Like if I can go and like be alone, go for a walk, put on some music, I can come back and that's usually what does it for me. Yeah, I'd say break the pattern <clears throat> to it's something simple. So just if you have a typical, I don't know, um, like you can break patterns throughout your day would be something. So if you have like a typical route that you always drive to work or you always get the same drink, you always whatever, do something different every day and just start breaking patterns. And sometimes that'll just jumble things up enough. Um, but if you're in like a, I really need to get something for me, like changing my physiology. So just you know, something as simple, like you just said, go for a walk, yeah. right? Even something simple is just, I'm gonna go for a walk or, you know, I'm gonna like, grab my teenager and, hey, let's go shoot hoops for just a couple minutes. And it's, fu it's, it's funny how, again, it's like by getting my body moving and out of that headspace, um, that assassin that I talked about earlier, like he gets put at bay. And then all of a sudden, again, the yeah, idea, something come, ah, and go back inside. <laughs> um, so just something like that. <clears throat> Yeah, and also I feel like too, definitely that, but being okay in the waiting, like I go through, I will go six months and there's nothing, nothing that uh, resonates or I don't really feel called to sit down and, and paint. It's either like, you know, you can ask my family, I'm either, I mean, those are for, those are since like the first of the year and there's some more at home, but then I'll go for a long period of time and it's all in all in his time and being patient which can be really frustrating 